Hello and welcome back to another story recap video. Today I'll be taking a look at the immensely popular and iconic GTA 5 and explaining exactly what happens in the story if you need to recap to a certain point or just want to know what happens in the game. GTA 5 is a game that despite its 2013 release date is still played by a lot of people now. And if you want to know if it's still worth buying today, then you can watch my review and score out of 100 up here. Let's begin. Welcome to Los Santos, the bustling Hollywood-esque city in the state of San Andreas. But wait, before that, there is a prologue. Set in North Yankton nine years prior to the main game story, we see three criminals attempting to rob a cash depot. They are Michael Townley, Trevor Phillips, and Brad Snyder. During the job, Michael says, You forget a thousand things every day. How about you make sure this is one of them? Which is his signature saying, remember that line, as it's important later. The job goes bad and they are pursued by local law enforcement. In a big shootout, Brad and Michael are shot and Trevor escapes into the snowy horizon. In a cutscene afterwards, we see a funeral being held for Michael, but then we see Michael watching his own funeral from a distance. No, this isn't a GTA Undead Nightmare DLC. Michael has obviously faked his own death. Flash forward nine years and we're back in the before-mentioned Los Santos. We see Michael again, who now goes by the name of Michael DeSanta. He seems to live a lavish lifestyle in a big mansion in the fancy Rockford Hills area with his wife Amanda and kids Jimmy and Tracy. However, as shown by his opening appointment with his shrink, Michael is a heavily depressed man. When leaving his appointment, the focus switches to two other men, Franklin Clinton and Lamar Davis, with the first being our second playable character. Lamar and Franklin are street hustlers who are members of a gang called The Families. They both work for a corrupt car salesman called Simeon, who seems to trap people in dodgy repayment contracts and then gets Franklin and Lamar to repossess the vehicles. Sometime later, Franklin is sent to repossess a car from a person called Jimmy DeSanta, who turns out to be Michael's deadbeat son. Franklin sneaks into Michael's house and steals the car. However, upon returning to the depot, Michael appears in the back seat and holds Franklin at gunpoint. Franklin explains that he's just doing what he's told and Michael seems to respect the fact that he can follow orders. He then subsequently orders Franklin to crash into Simeon's car dealership. Nice one. Franklin obliges and Michael hands him a wad of cash before beating the living shit out of Simeon. Franklin is tired of gang life and street hustling and he yearns for bigger endeavours and white-collar crime. Sensing that Michael may be someone who has experience in that field, a fair assumption considering he just ordered him to crash into a shop, he visits Mr. DeSanta again. The two converse before Michael has to leave the house, hearing somebody has stolen his boat. With Franklin's help, they retrieve the boat and Jimmy, who was on board. Later, Michael returns home to find his wife Amanda enjoying an unusual type of rally with her tennis coach. Enraged, Michael, with the help of Franklin, pursues the coach and pulls down his luxury hilltop home. Michael, a man who clearly has missed his hobby of being a psychopath, celebrates his carnage. However, back at home, the duo are confronted by a man who Franklin recognizes as Martin Madrazo, an even bigger psychopath and famous drug lord. It soon appears that the home was not in fact the tennis coaches, but Madrazo's, and he orders Michael to find the money to pay compensation. This forces Michael to come out of retirement and get back into the world of crime. Looks like I'm gonna have to postpone my retirement. Fuck. He enlists the help of both Franklin and Lester Crest, his old accomplice from his crime days. Lester is a master hacker and has helped Michael plan and pull off a series of heists in the past from the shadows. The trio hires some local help and rob a high-end jewelry store. During the robbery, Michael confronts a local traffic warden and says, You forget a thousand things every day, pal. Make sure this is one of them. Remember that from before? See, told you it was important. 
The job is a success and the duo celebrate and successfully pay off Madrazo. However, the story is only just beginning. We switch to the northern part of the map named Sandy Shores. In this region, people smoke meth, live in trailers and have two teeth. We again see Trevor from the prologue who is enjoying a romantic evening with a local model. However, he is distracted by a news report in which the traffic warden from before repeats the line. You forget thousands of things every day. You make sure this is one of them. Trevor, realizing that this is Michael's signature, is shocked. Due to Michael's fake death years ago, Trevor genuinely believes that he had died in the police shootout. Angry and confused, he orders his stupid friend Floyd to go and search for anyone named Michael Townley in Los Santos. During a few missions, we learn a lot about Trevor. He runs a small drug empire in the desert in which he tries to secure a contract with the Chinese, only to be beaten by a rival. Trevor subsequently kills their entire family and blows up their farm. Sorry, I forgot to mention, Trevor is fucking insane. Some time later, Floyd returns and explains that he found no Michael Townley, but a Michael DeSanta who matches the description. Trevor then heads to the city to track down his old friend. Back with Michael, we learn the true nature of his fake death. He made a deal with an FIB agent named Dave Norton. Dave set Michael up financially and helped him change his identity. In return, Dave was credited for killing the famous Michael Townley and thus earned a promotion. Trevor was supposed to be killed in the shootout, but instead Brad was and was buried in Michael's fake grave, whereas Trevor still believes Brad to be in prison. Trevor eventually tracks Michael down and the two are reunited. Before they can discuss the elephant in the room, Michael has to go and save his daughter Tracy from shaming herself on a local reality TV show. Trevor helps and together they save Tracy and humiliate celebrity presenter and regular GTA member Laszlo. Michael and Trevor remain frosty with Michael not properly explaining what happened and why he is still alive. Due to the jewelry store job, Michael broke his deal with FIB agent Dave Norton and in turn Dave introduces him to his boss Steve Haynes, who blackmails Michael into performing a series of operations to undermine the International Affairs Agency. Michael reluctantly obliges and enlists the help of Franklin, Lester and Trevor. After a series of jobs, Steve Haynes becomes paranoid and orders the group to break into the FIB building and destroy any evidence linked to him. During the raid, Michael smartly deletes any evidence on himself too, removing the leverage that Steve and Dave have over him. During this time, the trio's lives begin to all derail. Trevor is stuck in a war with multiple drug gangs. Franklin has to save his friend Lamar from a certain death at the hands of a rival gang, and Michael's family leaves him. A little time later, Michael is introduced to Devin Weston, a rich investor who employs Michael and co to steal some cars for him. Michael agrees, but only on the promise that Devin would introduce him to Solomon Richards, an old school famous movie producer. Michael has a deep love for classic movies and Devin sets up the meat. Michael forms a friendship with Solomon and begins helping around the movie set, usually beating or intimidating people who are causing problems. In return, Solomon gives Michael a producer credit on his upcoming movie. Michael, for the first real time in the game, is happy. However, as we all know, true happiness doesn't exist in video games, and Michael and Solomon are soon betrayed by Devin. The investor has plans for the land and shuts down the studio, giving the copy of Michael's film to his assistant to take away and destroy. Michael, in a blind rage, chases Devin's assistant Molly, which leads to her accidentally being swallowed up by, by an aeroplane. What a way to go. The film is saved, but Michael has now made a powerful enemy in Devon. Lester and the team begin to plan one final job, which they call the big one. They plan to rob the Union Depository, which is a pretty audacious heist. However, before they can plan the job, Trevor finally pieces together exactly what happened back in North Yankton and visits Michael's fake grave to find Brad inside. Before the duo can do anything, they are attacked by the Chinese, one of the many groups Trevor has pissed off. 
Trevor escapes, but Michael is captured. Michael is tortured by the Chinese in an attempt to find out where Trevor is. However, Franklin and Lester manage to track him down and save him from a certain death. Back to the FIB, Michael meets with Dave and Steve, but it appears that Steve has betrayed them. This leads to a major standoff between the FIB, the IAA, and a private security firm called Merriweather, whom the trio have pissed off multiple times in the game already. Michael looks set to be killed, but is saved by Trevor, who claims that only he has the right to kill Michael. Afterwards, the trio proceed with the Union Depository job and are incredibly successful, leaving all three mega rich. However, with the champagne still on ice, Franklin is approached by Steve Haynes and Dave Norton, who explain that Trevor is a liability to all of them and needs to be killed. Failing to do so will mean they will arrest Franklin. He is also then contacted by Devin Weston, who orders Franklin to kill Michael, seeking revenge for the early game events. We then, as the player, are presented with three choices. Kill Trevor, kill Michael, or a suicide mission in which we attempt to save both. If you choose either of the first two, that person dies and the game ends. But I think that most players chose the latter, in which the trio team up and fight off a raid by the FIB and Merriweather before going on to kill all of their enemies in one night, including the Chinese triad leader, Steve Haynes, and finally, Devin Weston. With their enemies dead and the money from the high successfully in their bank account, Michael's family returns home, Trevor moves back to Sandy Shores, and Franklin begins to enjoy a lavish life away from street warfare. The trio part ways, but remain friends. And that is what happens in GTA 5. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget you can see more story recaps from iconic video games on my channel and reviews of all the newest titles. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.